Welcome. Welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, and I am your Heart Shift Coach. Today is day 30. It's also wrap-up day. Wrap-up for this wonderful project of so many heartfelt conversations for peace that I've been privileged to share with you. It's my hope, of course, that as you listen to the challenges and the rewards of peace that had been realized by my guests and of course by myself, that you will have begun to explore how you also can cultivate more peace in your life, as well as extending that hand of peace to others. In truth, of course, you're extending your love. Love that has grown from a limited version into a more expansive and unconditional aspect. This is the ultimate reward for the work that we do. It's also the greatest challenge. And so today you may have noticed that the title of this conversation is a little bit different. It is the cost of peace renounced, meaning what does it cost you to not be cultivating peace, to not be reaching for that higher vibrational frequency, the only frequency where peace can be found? What has it cost you? You know, this is something that many of us, without even recognizing, unfortunately have learned to become numb to. We don't notice necessarily our levels of anxiety or stress, our restlessness, our sense of, of unfulfillment or being separate from the world. In fact, sometimes it becomes so commonplace that we just think that it's a natural part of life. And the truth is nothing could be further from that truth. As the magnificent being of light that you are, our natural beingness is all in light. So think about how light is not just a stream. It's made up of trillions of particles that come together. This of course is the collective consciousness that we are a part of and we greatly affect every experience that we have and the and the experiences of all those around us in fact it ripples out into multi-dimensional aspects of which we won't go into now we'll save that for another time but what i want you to realize is that you're not an island you are so intricately connected to all that is. In fact, we could even say that you are all that is. And so when we are out of alignment with an energy that is of our true nature, the true nature of you as that particle of light, what happens is the entire stream of light is dimmed. It can't possibly effectively project light if all of those particles are not charged in the same way. Of course, as there becomes greater numbers of those whose lights have dimmed, so does that stream of light dim as a whole. And so the conversations that we've been having have been really with the intention to supercharge you as a particle of light into remembering who you really are. You are a light of this world. And I know that it seems almost far-fetched. It's too much for the, for the mind to wrap itself around because it's not of the mind. And so it makes perfect sense that that would be a challenge this is a knowingness of the heart. It's the only place where you can truly remember who you are. 
it's only there where this energy that you are is untouched. It's not affected by the chaos of the world. It's also not even affected by your attempts to diminish it. You cannot. What you can do, however, is renounce it. You can, because you have free will, you can choose not to align with it and create a path for it to be projected or extended through you. This we do all the time. When we start to buy into any energies or manifestations of those energies that have us believing that we are not light beings, that we are these mere mortals who are subjugated by life. You are here as a co-creator, as all that is. You're the creator and you are so powerful but you need your light in order to be able to manifest and create from it wholeheartedly. So I just want to talk about the cost to you right now, as well as the cost to me and the cost to the whole collective, we're gonna call humanity for today. The cost is, is that as all of these lights are diminished, as your light is diminished, as I said, light has no path to follow. What happens as we get further and further away from recognizing who we are, we start to experience all things that are associated with fear. We start to associate and align with the belief that we're not enough, that we're not lovable, that we're not valuable or worthy, perhaps even that we're not capable of loving or living. In that energetic field, you will remain separate from joy, which can only rise up from within you. You will remain separate from any sense of fulfillment because it will always be outside of you. In fact, you may not even reach for it if you believe that you are not worthy of it or not valuable enough to achieve it. You will not reach out to all of the gifts of spirit, all of the ways that you can expand and utilize this innate power within you to be connected and therefore tap in, tune in to the incredible intelligence and wisdom and supernatural powers of this collective. You will even have a limited access to happiness because you will always be seeking happiness from outside of you, seeking others to fulfill the happiness. Think about it. If you don't see yourself as worthy or lovable or enough of anything, happiness cannot be sourced from within you and certainly not the joy I spoke of a moment ago. What also will happen is you will lose your sense of well-being. You'll not feel safe. And when you're not feeling safe, you are distrustful. And yes, of course, you'll be distrustful of others and everything that's happening around you. But more importantly, you will be distrustful of yourself because you will be so far removed from the truth of your being and knowing your own power, knowing who you really are. In addition, and this is what is so painful, is that it will affect the entire lens that you are looking through at the whole world. 
And so this world that's meant to nourish you and nurture you and support you and provide for you in a way so that you can experience your fulfillment, your own expansion, your beingness, and truly step into your purpose as the magnificent soul that you are, because you will remain separate from that, you will remain separate from your true self. And any sense that there is something more for you. I don't know about you, but when I think about being in that place, I feel like I have to hide. I'm afraid that I'm under attack. I'm afraid that life is completely against me instead of it all being in favor for me. And so the cost of us renouncing peace is so extensive that it actually robs you from life. You will not experience life in all of its fullness, in all of the gifts that it has to gift you and to nurture you into becoming the most expansive, most incredible expression of light that you can be. And it will all be because of your own choosing. Because what you've seen and heard and have been given the opportunity to experience through the sharing of these conversations is that peace is always present, it's waiting for you. You must choose it. And you must be so committed to it that you're willing to let go of all of those beliefs that are keeping you separate from it. You need to let go of the thoughts that the beliefs create that lead you down these, these paths of pain and suffering, separation. You need to let go of those old choices that you made. Maybe it's, you know, different people in your life who you look to to help you to justify where you were. The commitment has to be total because peace is a total energy. It is a complete energy. You have to be willing to let go of past activities, actions that you had taken. Forgive yourself of those. Let it go. Any of those past actions are exactly that. They're in the past and they are not a part of who you are right here and right now when you decide to align with peace. All of that is actually forgotten by energy, the true essence of you. It doesn't even see it. Only you do if you dwell in that direction. So bring yourself to the forefront of your direction, of your intention. And every experience that you create now will be an automatic extension of that energy of peace. This is how it works. But it does take commitment and it takes a willingness for you to let go of whatever is keeping you separate, recognizing that the costs to you are far too great the cost to your families, to your friends, is far too great. The cost to our communities, to our states, our country, our world, it's far too great. And so on this 30th day, I invite you to 
start to compile a list of your, of your own. What are 30 ways that you can cultivate peace? Perhaps 30 things to let go of. The point is to reclaim. Let yesterday be the last day that you renounced peace. Let yesterday be the last day that you felt separate from life. Let yesterday be the very last day that you ever imagined that you were anything less than this magnificent being of light who is here as a light of this world. And let yesterday be that very last day where you were at war with yourself. And let today be the day that you have declared peace. Peace within you. Peace extended through you as you extend your hands, your heart, in peace to all those around you. Let nothing stand in your way. Let yourself start to reap the rewards that only peace can bring and the true freedom that your heart has been yearning for forever. So I'm leaving this with you. I hope that you're reaching right now for a pen and paper, creating your own list, 30 ways to cultivate peace within me. What am I willing to let go of right here and right now? And of course, what am I willing to let in? And if you want a little bit of a Kickstarter, go to heartshiftcoach.com, download your seven ways to cultivate peace. Let that be your first seven steps. And of course, make sure that you get your copy of the Peace Pledge. I can't begin to tell you, <coughs> excuse me, how the energy of this has affected my heart. <coughs> and my sense of really being connected to you. So, as I have for the past 29 days, I'm adding this day, day 30, and I'm reciting my peace pledge to you, and I want you to know that it comes from an even greater peaceful heart than when I started. That's how powerful I know that this is. So, my peace pledge. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating continuously my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, continuing to take personal responsibility for my beliefs and what they create, my thoughts and what they create, my choices and what they create, my actions and what they create and my experiences and what they create both within me and around me because I know that you are touched by them. And I know that as I am actively engaged that I'm bringing this in the forefront of my mind, in the forefront of my heart, that it will lead me to compassionate action in all that I do. I take this peace pledge very seriously and I pass it on to you in the hopes that you will do the same. And of course it comes from my peaceful heart to yours Peace in, peace out. Extend your hands and your heart and your mind filled with peace to all those that you meet. 
and you will live a life beyond anything that you can imagine in this moment. But very soon, the evidence of the rewards of peace will be piling up all around you and you will wonder how you ever lived without it before. Many blessings to you. Until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful day and a peaceful heart.